Hi guys, Bob Green here. On the 30th of January 2017, I was sent an email by Francesco Tilani, a long-time collaborator of the MFMP, and he said that we found a new phenomena due to noble gas, uh, which helped us to increase the anomalous heat effect. And what they were doing was uh, employing the work on, on, based on this patent here uh, from 1994. So this is now um, lapsed. And uh, I'll take you to the patent. And it's really wonderful because it's like the, the simplest patent uh, for um, uh, fusing of deuterium uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, and I was reminded of, again to look at it by uh, a follower of the project, Scott Harrison. So thank you, Scott. Um, it uh, was uh, applied for by uh, Professor uh, Horst Preusker, something like that. Preusker. And uh, let's just get into the meat of it. That's it. It's not a lot. It's a couple of paragraphs. Um, the money shot is this, which is uh, the diagram of the apparatus. And essentially uh, what they've got is they've got uh, this uh, noble gas coming in here and the deuterium coming in here is mixed, comes through this capillary tube uh, down to the re reaction zone and it's claimed that helium comes out as a, a reaction product. Uh, Beautifully simple. Um, you have uh, some sort of capacitor with a switch here, so it's charging up, it's discharging through uh, potentially some sort of filament here, which uh, you know might uh, create uh, electrons through thermionic emission. Then you've got some sort of uh, uh, electric field between uh, here and here, um, up to 300 volts, it's saying here, I guess and uh, this will accelerate uh, the electrons um, and this uh, would ionize the uh, xenon and uh, depending what the metal is here uh, if this gets very hot when this capacitor is uh, discharged through here um, you might see that it gets um, uh, some disassociation so your deuterium molecule uh, splits into uh, D with one electron and D with one electron or D minus and a, a D without any electrons just a, a deuteron uh, and also because you can't get pure uh, deuterium uh, you will always have some uh, prot proteum in there you will get some protons uh, in the form of uh, protons with one electron or two electrons or no electrons so these are kind of the products that you will get there um, and the ionization of the uh, noble gas the noble gas is useful for a number of reasons one is it's non-reactive so that when you create these hydrogen uh, radicals uh, uh, on this filament uh, you are not going to be um, uh, forming chemical reactions because you've got a noble gas and also the noble gas itself can provide electrons uh, by being ionized itself and you know it's interesting that they used xenon and also xenon was used by um, uh, Francesco Cellani and you might be asking yourself why that is well I've got a note here we, we don't want helium because helium is something that we want to see coming out of this uh, reaction uh, and uh, uh, xenon's all the way down here and if you look at the ionization energies here um, for, a, for a mole or uh, uh, ionizing a mole of neon you need 2080.6 uh, kilojoules per mole but for xenon you only need uh, 1170.4 1, kilojoules per mole so you need a lot less energy to get the electrons free uh, to take part in this process um, than you do if you're using neon. So this is the natural choice here. There's radon down here as well. Um, and so that's one thing. Also, you can actually ionize by um, acceleration of uh, protons and, uh, and, and deuterons. Uh, so you may be able to get some ionization by the electric field here by having uh, ionized uh, monoatomic hydrogen. 
Uh, and so that uh, essentially is claimed to catalyze the process. And uh, this was way back in 1994. So this is now open and free uh, uh, to use. And uh, it's great that uh, Francesco uh, Cellani picked up on that and uh, seems to have seen higher excess heat uh, due to that. But this kind of apparatus is not overly complex. So it would be interesting to see if someone uh, would like to replicate that.